Are you good? Let's get it, brother. Where's how are we? Oh, man. It's been a yeah. while. Yes, For sir. real. Good to dude. see you. What's good? Dude, Starbucks in hand? Man, damn. <laughs> What's up, buddy? How are you? <laughs> you got a camera on me to get some love. <laughs> how you guys been? Good, good dude. Good. How yeah. you been? Good. So good. Yeah, we got we to gotta catch up, dude. I have a lot to ask you. The place grows every time, dude. Right? Yeah, I hope we don't get copyrighted for this Drake music right now. But oh, someone probably paused that before. Or left it off. But yeah. All right, guys. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna get Jordan, uh, Jordan seated. Get everything set up. Dude, we're excited, bro. Thank you so much for being on, guys. Let's get in the pause. All right, guys. What's going on? Uh, renewed podcast episode sixteen. Yeah. Um, as always, I'm Ethan Heath. Uh, Phil is not here today. He's feeling a little groggy, a little under the weather. So I'm, I'm a. Uh, Taking the big boy seat today. I'm hosting this episode. How's it feel, man? You look good in the seat. Thank you, man. It feels not a little, as, little not ner- as good as Phil, though. Yeah, you know, yeah. I can never replace him. Yeah. But uh, guys, if you're new to the pod, um, to my left is Xander Moore. What's going on? Um, and we got a very special guest with us today. Someone that was on a very early episode, right when we were starting out, gave us his time. Uh, we we're so humbled to be in his presence. So thank you so much, Jordan Bo. Thanks for having me. Here with us. Yeah, Am I the only one yeah, happen? Dude. Thank you so yeah, yeah. much. That's all right. Keep it going. Yeah. <laughs> I know we had to, I know we had to uh, meet a little later today. You, you said you just got out of church, right? I was at church. Um, okay. Well, Sunday. You had me on a Sunday. Yeah, yeah that's, that's true. That's when you guys shoot. So I also go to church at a weird time. I got four. Yeah, you got four? Late There's service? There's like our church has two locations. So they have like morning services and evening service. Okay. And evening's been a vibe. 4 p.m. is a good time to go to church. Yeah. Got my morning mm. on Sunday. Yeah, it's been How was your Easter Sunday? I know we, we didn't record last last pod. Hope everyone had a good good Friday and a good uh, good Easter Sunday. But how was your Sunday? Did you do anything special? It was amazing. Our church did a, a Good Friday service on the beach. I live, by, I live by the beach now. You know what I mean? We're doing beach. Oh, yeah, he, he we're gonna up get up there now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Beach so we did a, a beach service, and they did like a paddle out, which I didn't do i wanted to do but all my friends were like eh, maybe not i don't want to blame them because i was complicit i i stayed on the beach mm-hmm. okay but watching them all paddle out i wish i went and then sunday we did a sunrise service at my church beautiful and then i tried to serve but it didn't end up working out but it's, that's the story in itself yeah you Damn. win some and lose some surfing's yeah. definitely right. not easy i didn't surf serve yeah, surf. okay. <laughs> I don't surf. No, no, no. I don't need to try. I can the... surf a little. Okay. I'm going to try to surf, but that I did not try sense. to surf that day. No, no, no. Mm. Yeah. I wish. I, wish. I, I, just heard, I just heard the beach. I heard, I heard surf. I was like, oh, you surfed you at the surf. beach. Yeah. Okay, there, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can I, see the correlation. Mix up. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was great. That sounds like a dope church service, to be honest. Okay. Like... The whole vibe. Been, I'm like the Easter pod then, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah this is the Easter yeah. pod. Okay. We're very blessed. Mm-hmm. We're very I'll blessed take it, right I'll take it, I'll take it. So yeah. uh, speaking of blessings, man, you have just recently became an uncle. And yeah. I know in, our, in, in the very first pod you were talking about how you were excited to be an uncle and how that was coming up. And now it's like post being uncle. You well, know? we were trying to figure out when I was in the pod last. And he was born big, like first week of October. So that means we haven't been on for over six months, well over six months. I need Wait, to check no, this. Have, I need to check this. I don't think we even started the pod until November. Well, something's no way. Jordan Bow was, yeah. yeah. was, was three months ago. So that three episode. Months ago. That episode. So was I was three an uncle. Ago. Oh, you were an uncle. Okay. I was, Maybe an it uncle. was too early where you didn't see the, your nephew yet, or no, that's impossible. Really? Yeah. I don't know. I don't remember even the conversations. <laughs> I don't yeah, think it's we been had a, a conversation. I think it was kind of overlooked, but but uh, with you know, uh, with that being said, how has it been? I know that you, I saw a post about you holding the holding the kiddo in the in the car seat. Was it a My car Delph seat? Post. It's not a big deal, dude. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just putting feelers out. You know? yeah, yeah, feelers. Yeah. Um, no, dude, it's been amazing. Like me and my brother, maybe like I mentioned last pod, we're like we've always been close my whole life, uh-huh. and we're only we're under three years apart. So we did all the things growing up together, like all mm-hmm. of our holidays. Like we'd trade candy on Halloween. So that's the thing I'm the most excited about. But to see him parent and raise a child yeah. and to like, as, as he becomes more, I don't want to say coherent because children are coherent, but like he's got such a personality now. Yeah. Just evolving. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. And it's so fast. And I know like as much as I, I want the moment to arrive where he can communicate with me and he can run around. Yeah. I'm in no rush to get there. It's uh-huh. like time's going so fast. Just He's a little chubster. He's it, like it, 20 pounds, the thickest thighs you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> crazy. Looks like a cinnamon roll, that little boy. But he's also a 
vibrant redhead. Dude looks like he's on fire. Really? Fire. Where, where's the where's the jeans in, in the My redhead jeans? sister-in-law's a redhead. Okay. Mm. Doesn't have, like, that red of hair, uh-huh. but a lot of the freckles, and then her in her family, she has a lot of it. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. I don't know if ginger's an appropriate term, but I'm going to use it because <laughs> I think it's a great... He's a little ginger baby. Right. He's a little ginger if baby. anyone gets that's offended, cute. we are not using ginger as a derogatory term. Oh, that is, man. I think that's <laughs> mean if they think it's a derogatory term. Yeah, yeah. that's on you I, if I, you I, think that. <laughs> I think so as well. Yeah. I have a question before we get in the pod. What's yeah. Up? I haven't... Keep it. I've been keeping up. I know you guys expect me to keep up. Yeah, what's up? Uh, uh, really? No, I mean, is, listen, I got things. I'm doing stuff. Oh, you know uh-huh, I mean? yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's been, who's been the most interesting episode so far? And you're not putting that on other people by saying their episodes aren't interesting. Yeah, 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 of course. Every guest that we've had has been really good. That's a yeah. stupid answer. That's not the one I'm looking for. I'm looking for something. I think, stupid. okay, yeah. I mean, every guest except you. Yeah, okay. There you <laughs> go. I think uh, most specific. I'm, obviously, we're all grateful for every guest. Of course. But I think that the one that really left a mark a mark for me about, like, yeah, I'm marking that one down is probably Anthony Woods. Okay. Um, he's kind of a fitness influencer. He's a chi- uh, He was a trainer. He's got um, a degree in psychology. And he gave us journaling. He gave us a journal, his own personal customized journal with a motivational message at the front. And he was basically talking about how journaling impacted his life. Um, in numerous ways and he was just kind of motivating us and inspired me to start journaling every day and I found a bunch of flaws and a bunch of bad habits that I would think that are you know normal in everyday life you kind of overlook it after a while because you think everything's normal but being able to reflect at night and understand why you're doing the things that you're doing that that impacted me the most it's made me it's made me rethink a a bunch of stuff so I would say Anthony Woods have you been consistent with it? Since yeah. then? Yeah, I have. Um, not as consistent as when we got on. I think I wrote for a month, every single day for a month. And then after that, it was every couple of days. And now I probably journal once a week, which is probably just too, it's too we spread, gotta get back. Too gotta spread get out. But um, yeah. it's, it's so beneficial, dude. Talk about having like anxiety or just any anxiousness. Being able to communicate that, because sometimes we don't know how we're feeling, right? We just feel a type of way. We don't know yeah. why. We don't know the source. So being able to write it out and then talking about your day, you kind of pinpoint where something went wrong and kind of triggered a response for you to have a bad, you know, snowball effect throughout your emotions throughout the rest of the day. So I think it's very beneficial. I would say Anthony Woods for sure. He's very, very intelligent too, how he, how he, how he thinks. I, okay. I really yeah. like that one, yeah. Yeah, he was a really good guest. Yeah. For me, probably... Um, I really liked Matisse. I just remember it was like, it's just a really good time. Just yeah. like good vibes. I liked his story. Uh, he's got it was, the slogans, yeah? Yeah, he's the one with the slogans. <laughs> For real. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <a> <laughs> Posted like a stamp. You know, I was just like, I loved those slogans, bro. And he was, he was a really chill guy. And uh, his story reminded me a lot like how I kind of got into it. Just uh, like, because he was a personal trainer gone to the gym during covid before that kind of felt like a bum yeah just playing video games all day i was like damn that was just like me so. now he's leveling up in life yeah he's leveling up his gta character now he's leveling up his irl character yeah yeah we he was a that. gta pro before was he really yeah <laughs> yeah he was talking about all the all the cool futuristic cars he would have and stuff like that mm. <laughs> yeah don't talk to me about gta <laughs> i don't got answers for you guys man no yeah got nothing well, but Definitely those guys. Yeah, for but sure. Pretty much every other guest that we've had has brought something for sure. Speaking of podcasts, mm-hmm. before the, before my next question for you, uh, you were kind of mentioning something about watching podcasts a lot recently. Is, is there like anyone in specific that you've been kind of finding some influ- uh, influential aspects to? My like podcast behavior is sort of following guests I like on different podcasts. Okay. So I've been watching a lot, and, and a lot of those guests end up having their own podcasts sometimes. Mm-hmm. I actually really do like watching podcasters go on podcasts as well. Mm. Yeah. Like, I, I will probably get into podcasting at some point. That's a big goal this year. And my dream is to, like, interview Joe Rogan. Oh, yeah, that cool. would be Like, no sick. one's ever had, I've never seen someone interview Joe. No, I've never seen him on another pod except Where, like, this. he's not in control. Mm-hmm. I think he's more of, like, a conversation-based podcaster, yeah. so it's less of an interview, but... I think it'd be cool to see a Joe Rogan interview. Um, I've been watching a lot of Jordan Peterson stuff. Love Jordan Peterson. Weirdly, I watched 
Like I said, a, a couple Destiny things. I don't agree with a lot of the things, he, most of the things he says, to be honest. But I love seeing how people come to opinions that I disagree with. Because sometimes I think, I think most of us as people can have a hard time understanding yeah. with mm-hmm. all our emotions and getting all frustrated. Like, leaving my opinion out of it, it's cool to see an in- intellect explain why he thinks the way he does especially and like I've seen debates where I get both sides and I've watched some of him I love George George Janko's a solid dude yeah it's been cool to see him blow up in the podcasting space because he's always had communication as a gift yeah um and I'm in my faith and he's super yeah he seems theologically sound Mm -hmm. yeah I'm too ignorant on theology to really know Mm -hmm. so from my perspective I get a lot of good information from him and i think he's a really great interviewer yeah i agree so that's kind of where i've been i like I mean, the fact the- that he kind of uh went out on his own and he's doing like really good for himself because on logan paul's he was always just kind of like yeah posted up to the side there's been so many he clips just where get guests, ridiculed too dude. yeah guests yeah. would just like kind of be like oh you're still over there like bro you haven't said yeah. nothing this whole time yeah so well i think that because I, I saw a clip where he's like, well, most of this stuff is pointless. He's like, I don't even know why we're talking about it. Mm. Kind of attitude, you know? They're like, why are we talking about this one? Like, he's like, I have nothing to say about it. That's why, that's why I'm not saying anything. I don't have anything mm. to say. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah, with all that stuff that happened with with the whole impulsive, is that the... I don't even watch it. I, don't, I haven't watched one episode of that podcast, mm. but I don't think that was right. And at the end of the day... He has all of his glory to God, and it's it's flourishing, dude. Like, you can see how God works. George is a good example. Hundred percent, exactly. His episode with Tate, I get he's a polarizing figure, was extremely good. Shit. I've seen a lot of Andrew Tate stuff. The way that George I'm drinking seltzer water, by the way, we're gonna have some burping today. Let's be <laughs> clear about that. Like always, yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Liquid death. <laughs> liquid death. Got Please sponsor death this man. Um, <laughs> the way that he led that conversation. And it's cool to see someone like Andrew be challenged in his thoughts. Yes. Mm-hmm. That was something I found to be super inspiring. Yeah. And another thing I will mention, and this is no dog to George because I think he's, he's doing incredible. And he's a super self-aware man, self-aware enough to make a whole episode after his Jordan Peterson interview saying the interview was a flop. My take on that interview that. was he was trying to intellectually impress Jordan Peterson. And I think Jordan Peterson, being such an intellect, is far more impressed by curiosity, which it does kind of get talked about in the podcast, but uh-huh. you will, I don't think you'll impress him by acting like you know things. No. I think you'll impress mm. him by showing your ignorance Yes, with a willingness to learn. 100%. 100%. And, and I think he admitted mm. to that, so I'm not, like, I'm not saying that I know the, the secret yes. here, but yeah. I think when I watched it, it was very apparent, and I'd love to see another episode of them where George... I it, don't want to say gets off his high horse because I don't really feel like that was the case, but mm-hmm. for better reasons. It's more, yeah, yeah. Yeah. more open to learning. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, I agree. I watched that episode too. I didn't really even see that, but to know what he was trying to do is pretty interesting. I love anything with Jordan Peterson. I think he's a, I mean, he's been a, he's been a, uh, a very influential person in the the, the debate realm yeah. for mm-hmm. I think over a decade, right? I mean, he's been doing stuff for a long I mean, time. That guy's credentials are crazy. Yeah, Psycho- like world renowned psychologist, Harvard professor. Yep, Damn. he's a G. He's definitely again also <laughs> he's a G. also <laughs> also polarizing figure. He's just like hyper emotional, mm-hmm. super. I don't know. He's just like he's a really good like example of an outcome of I think what doing psychology for that long kind of how that takes a toll on you that's yeah. is that, is that what he is i don't know too much he's about that yeah, one, yeah. Of the, one of the best supposedly i don't know mm. Dude, very intelligent man that's all i'm saying i think yeah. one of like the strongest intellects of our time really Some people might disagree Ooh. with that I, no, outside I, of his view on politics yeah independent yeah. of that i think he's hyper intelligent yeah his whether his, you disagree or agree his mm. critical analysis and critical thinking is like off the charts he'll He'll explain something, and sometimes I have to watch it back two or three times for me to get it. But mm. when I when it clicks, I'm like, oh my! Like he is like onto something. Like I I would have never thought of it like that. Just just how he talks about how we learn and act as as the human race, and how we just go about certain things. But the reasoning behind the reasons why we do it, yeah. and it's it's just it's it's so interesting. He is 
Definitely a G. Like you need if if you get your pod going, you gotta get him on there oh, too. Like that's, that would be a dream. That's got. I'd be, be humble, dude. I'd look so ignorant. <laughs> yeah, dude. I would, that's that'd be me. I would just be like Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about this? Because <laughs> I think nothing. My yeah. opinion's pointless. It's like, oh, I'm changing my. I, you know, I didn't even think anything before. <laughs> Whatever you just said is what I think right now. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Someone I've been watching a lot lately is, I'm sure you guys both know Cliff. Um, if that's how you say his Cliff, name, or Hinchcliffe, uh, the one that goes on college campuses. Oh no, no, no I'm thinking of Tony Hinchcliffe. Cliff. Uh, oh, what's his name? I do. Christian. The religious one. Yeah, the re- religious the, like one. The, theologian. Mm-hmm. He was on George Jenko's podcast too. Yeah. 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 I've been watching him a lot. I forget his last name. He shows up on my I'm on his for you page for sure. Yeah, dude. If, I, I've been seeing him like almost I don't every, every the day. Name, dude. Yeah, I'm gonna butcher even, it. But we all butcher. know who you're talking about. He's he's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like how he just like he's not like he doesn't hammer his uh his beliefs into people that don't know or who aren't religious, like people that are curious. He just like kind of plants a seed in there, you know, gets them thinking a little bit. Yeah, and I love and, his knowledge about the Bible is crazy too, dude. Yeah, he'll I know. pull off verses out of his head, yeah. just like ones that you've never even heard of. Yeah, it's, uh-huh. it's it's like wild. off the dome, like damn, you yeah. know. And like usually, <laughs> most people can't even like really argue with what he's got to say unless he, unless they're just like ignorant, I guess. Yeah, just they, don't they want just plan to. Out, don't believe. Yeah, like no. he's very fact based. Mm. Very in a good way, and he's compassionate. He's loving. Mm-hmm. He's like a good follower of Jesus. I think like he does a good job. Some people. The Christian faith has all sorts of people, and some people just get a little hyper passionate, and that takes over. And they, yeah, I guess rather the opposite, like they lack a lot of compassion. Yeah, so mm. hyper passionate, I guess is the word. I mean, yeah. one um one example of that, another thing I've been watching a lot is uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be a complete one eighty, so we can like flip back in a little bit, but. Uh, so I've been watching a lot of stuff about like, you know, past serial killers and everything. <laughs> <laughs> that is a complete one. Yeah. I was so glad to see where we were going. <laughs> and I don't know. Y'all ever heard of Ed Gain? Mm-mm. No. All right. He's back in forties or fifties, 1940s or fifties. And pretty much, um, this man's mother was a comp- like, you know, a crazy Christian, if you would call it. Like she believed that any woman besides her was like the devil and everybody else except them was going to hell and pretty she much thought she was like god yeah yeah and like pretty much she uh made her two sons one was ed gain and then his brother made them believe that but except as they got older they were never allowed to leave and leave the farm besides for school not allowed to play with farm. other kids yeah i forget where exactly it's in the um you know one of them Random states. Midwest or Midwest, what? Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't name one. You're going to dog on someone's state. You know what I mean? They're like, what the heck? <laughs> yeah. This is, uh, yeah. This is like super cool. <laughs> Louisiana. I don't know. Tennessee. You're one of those. <laughs> but, uh, Tennessee? <laughs> one of them random states? <laughs> <laughs> what? They got okay. Nashville? All right. They got other places. <laughs> they got others. All right, keep fine. Keep going. Okay, okay. Yeah, but anyways. Um, so, yeah, as he got older, his brother kind of grew out of it, got a girl and everything. But Ed again, he never grew out of it. So he became obsessed with his mother. And after she died, he would, like, go and gr- rob graves and just, like, start skinning women specifically to the point. Dead women? Dead women. And then a couple of live ones. I think he's got, like, three confirmed kills oh, or great. something like that. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> three so, confirmed kills sounds like... We're playing Call of Duty. Yeah, they're confirmed. Yeah, they they suspect a couple more, but Uh, we got three confirmed. Confirmed. Yeah, I don't like the things coming out my mouth right now. Continue. (laughs) They're just going. Yeah. So I mean, it's pretty much just the fact that his crazy religious mother made turned him into kind of a psychopath. Yeah. uh, With he, you know, made a skin suit after her passing so he could feel like he was his mother. So, okay, that's dark. So, so yeah. where did um? <laughs> I'm hoping this question. Where did where did the where did the thought of of that come into play when we because, were talking about? Because that? we were talking about <laughs> we were talking about we were like, talking about religion and Christianity. We were talking about uh, okay, Cliff. I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that a good sense. segue. Like, I just made a video <laughs> of someone. I don't I don't want to use the word dogging, but he was essentially dogging on religion and like the government using religion to control people. Mm-hmm. And I think there needs to be some separation between religion and Christianity. I think religion historically has been used to control people. For sure. And I don't think Christianity really stands for that. Mm -hmm. 
because if you look at Christianity and the gospel and other outside of the government, really try to remove God from the families and from the schools yeah. and mm-hmm. from the big corp. Like I guess that's a whole other pod. Not dude. corporations. Yeah. I know. We'll, yeah, make, we can get deep totally, into that. Yeah. yeah. But um, Hollywood and the music industry kind of pushing like what seems to be some version of Satanism. Say, say t- I don't know. I'm, it's out there. A I'm lot. not uh, just away from God. Away from yeah. away From God. Then that's sort of clearly a reason why that's not the case. But outside of that, I'm like, you can follow the gospel to a T. Mm. The Christian gospel. The commandments and your life will significantly improve. Like, there's no doubt about that. 100%. Yeah, for sure. And so that's why I think there's, it's important to kind of draw a line between religion, which, yeah, I will admit has been used to control people and has very extreme circumstances. And I don't think that excludes Christianity as well, right? Mm-hmm. There's extremism mm-hmm. and everything. Yeah. But, yeah, that's one of those scary versions of religion going the yeah. wrong way. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I mean, one thing that Cliff always says is he doesn't follow the religion, he follows Jesus. Yeah, so that, that's what I was going to say, is normally when people are like, oh, I would never get into a religion, never get into a religion, I would all, I, I would, my, my rebuttal to that is, um, ever since I've kind of gotten closer to God, I've, I've always put God before religion. I've My relationship with God has been stronger than my relationship with the religion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that, I think that it, it sits a little bit better with people um, who are kind of just standoffish with religion. As long as you have a good relationship with God and you and you um, um, accept him into your heart and stuff, you're saved. Like, and, and you're judged off of what you know, not what you don't know. You know what I mean? There's people in other countries that don't have access to the Bible, but they believe in God and they're saved. Mm-hmm. So, Well, Christianity sort of, I don't want, again, I don't want to say Trump's, but it like post dates all of the other religions. Like Christianity really is the Lord or it's Jesus coming down yeah. when all these other ex- religions exist. Judaism, I'm a bit ignorant here, but I'm sure Muslim existed and all these other religions yeah. does it, it. They're just different. It doesn't dispute yeah. Jesus's arrival, like yeah. Jesus mm-hmm. being the Messiah. Yep. So Christianity is again, it's I'm, I'm preaching to people who know this, but he is the new gospel, the new church that was created mm-hmm. after his arrival so when people talk about like the one true religion, not the genes, like uh, the oh yeah, true religion genes. I think disputing that gets a little complicated. Where in reality, it's like I feel like I'm just a part of the new church yeah. that was created by God. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, mm. yeah. I don't know. That's how I, I'm. A, I'm a new Christian, so I won't speak too much on it. But dude, no, next no. pod we seriously have to get into a topic about. Um, just the new stuff like social media and how it's dragging people away from you know we have like a whole pod ahead of us dude so we can like totally yeah we talk could about totally that. talk about that right okay, now let's do it but I, I do i do have another um a couple more questions if you want to get through them let's we can get, get through, through. It. all right um so i recently saw that you're you started picking up the camera again right or you had some you had some passion about picking the camera up mm-hmm. starting to uh shoot some cars was it cars it was cars yeah so what what drove that where do you think that came from it's super unofficial. Like, I, I always like shooting content. Mm-hmm. I've definitely been on a hiatus. Like, we spoke about last po- last podcast for the last two years or so. Transitioned all of my business more to, like, consulting. Because I didn't want to put the pressure on content in a season of my life where there was, like, no subject matter. I was super passionate about documenting. Which is great. It's more of, like, by necessity just to pay my bills and to get mm-hmm. me through. And it's the thing I know and love the most. But that doesn't mean I don't love creating content. I just didn't, like I said, I didn't have a subject matter to create content around. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've thought about going down the car route and all these things. And I think I have like this innate fear of picking something, like picking, this is a problem with me that I'm working on. It's like feeling like if I select an alleyway in my business or maybe even a passion, that if I go too far down that and it was the wrong decision, Mm-hmm. that I'm going to regret it or that it was it would take away from another path that's better. Mm, yeah. That you can't come back from it. Correct. And so I love creating content. I love taking photos. Like I, I'm definitely a creative person. I've realized as I've grown older and, and met some people, um, some very creative people, that maybe like creativity isn't my main personality trait. Uh, I think my brain thinks creatively and I consider myself like a visionary. I think differently than most people. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't necessarily make me like a pure blood creative. I'm not like hyper imaginative. I'm not, I just see things differently. Yeah. That being said, I 
love taking photos. It's just not like my main passion. Like it's just something I love to do. And I think my whole career, I put too much pressure on photography and videography as means of business. Mm. And like anything, I think you need to be careful of the passions you have and putting pressure on them to produce like monetary fruit. Yeah. That, that's something I'm scared of. Mm-hmm. Scared of is the wrong word. I'm more careful about it in my life. And cars is one of those things. Like I killed cars by putting pressure on cars to produce income. Mm-hmm. And I think our culture has a tendency to, to preach turning your passions into your business yeah. with the classic saying of like, do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. And I think there's, there's good in that. The problem is it can be taken too far where it's like the irony of like you, I don't know, people use the saying of like pressure makes diamonds. Yeah. I think pressure in that circumstance makes quite the opposite. Mm. I think it makes something bad. Mm. And I've talked, I've had so many conversations recently of people that went down a route of pursuing their passions as a means of business and it killed their passions. Wow. And someone such as Rick Rubin, if you guys know Rick Rubin, Ru- Ru- Wow, <laughs> slow down You're there, buddy. Yeah. I'm just excited. <laughs> take, take your you know time. What I mean? yeah, yeah. Someone such as Rick Rubin, he's like a super famous producer and he has a lot of podcasts and he's just super, very creatively intelligent. He talks about the fact that it's totally okay to have a job yeah. that pays your bills and also allows the freedom and time to go do the thing you love. Mm-hmm. Like that's okay. And I think we demonize that in society. I've been guilty for demonizing that. And... Going back to your question, what happened with me with videographer, videography, photography, cars is sort of a reminder in that. And I think it's important to do what you love if you don't want work to feel like work. But be mm. careful to not kill the things you're passionate about in the process. That's right. beautiful. Yeah, that was very well said. Yeah, really long it took me long to say. No, but no, but it, no, it, you got you got the full point. Circle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's that's. I don't I don't have any uh, <laughs> subsidiary questions. Xander, do you have any? No, I mean. <laughs> Really, like you said it perfectly, like, you know, just don't kill your passions by working at it too hard. I guess I think a lot of people might suffer through that, so. And in doing so, I've noticed, like, it's taken time, but to watch those passions come back again, Mm -hmm. the ones that I've killed previously, like, to get excited about seeing a car, which is still a work in progress because I really killed it. But, like, photos. Like, I love picking up a camera and taking photos for no reason. I'm not a photographer. I'm not a photography page. My audience doesn't care. Mm -hmm. But I have fun doing it. And I share it. And it's, like, a buddy of mine. What really started it was my roommate is a big photographer, videographer. That's, like, his trade. Okay. And he's a good example of, like, he loves it. It's his gift, his ability to micromanage people and set things up. And I don't know. I don't want to speak for him, but, like, translate art as a as a as a mode of I don't know I'm just I just sound crazy right now but um he had a little film camera lens that's like detaches off like an AE1 an old film camera Mm -hmm. and I love shooting old lenses on new cameras so I just put an old lens on a new camera which plenty of people do Mm -hmm. I'm not coining that (laughs) um and it just feels like you get like more of a film vibe yeah. Which is mm. cool to like combine old and new tech. Yeah. To make something more personality filled. Yeah, no, I really like that because my cousin is also super into photography. And on our most recent vacation, she brought a little, you know, old digital camera. And just like the aesthetic of it is just like brings you back to like an older yeah. time. And it's like. coming back. Like mm-hmm. everything. You guys 100%. see like disposables, mm-hmm. point and shoot, little cameras. Like I think technology's gotten so good that like personalities kind of gotten removed of stuff interesting like if you open up like a sony a7s3 yeah it's extremely capable i want one they're great to make yeah. movies but just out of the body like there's no personality it's just phenomenal true yeah. that's it and i mean cars same thing like some cars you drive they're just really good yeah but mm-hmm. they're not fun that's why people want to go drive old porsches why people want to shoot film so i think sometimes evolution of tech you you can't you you make progress but you lose personality. Yeah, um, and I think someone who does that is uh, you ever see Dune Dune Two? Oh yeah. Yeah. So I oh, yeah. the director he like processes it in like normal like you know high quality then reprocesses it into like more of a gr- so you get that grainier look and then reprocesses it again to get like you know to get the whole nine yards I guess because he he doesn't like how perfect it comes out the first time. Yeah. 
Yeah. I don't know if it's him, but there was another producer or director who shoots a lot of his movies handheld. <laughs> like, really? really? He handholds like crazy rigs. And I think he might be the same like guy. Like the half a million was, dollar camera, like the, the movie cameras. Like big, they're more like custom cinema cameras, but yeah, okay. he'll like handhold them. Maybe they're connected to like something to support him, but he like was a, one like of the guys who, who's yeah, been shooting jacked. a lot of films <laughs> with the, um, what's <coughs> like the A7S three equivalent? Really? Uh, you would know. What is it? A7S three equivalent. Just like, oh, an FX3. Oh, yeah. You should know that. You should know that. Come on, Don. <laughs> Come on, Don. Um, That's the next investment. He's been shooting a lot of, he's ha- maybe in the past a shot, but he recently shot like some high production films using an FX3, just handheld stuff. And it brings that personality back. There's like, when you watch breakdowns of why he does it, it's, in, in term it is that. It's like mm-hmm. movies have evolved so much tech wise that like yeah. sometimes bringing back old techniques with maybe new production tech yeah. or, or like new directing can build something new, right? Yeah. Old and new make something new again. Also, this is the position I was talking about earlier. I got in it. That's fine, dude. Oh, that is I thought not it was going to be way worse. Yeah, I thought it was going to be way zestier. In my head, it looked, it looked goofy. I right? think I'm looking a little zestier right now. You, <laughs> boy, you looking zestier now. <laughs> All right, hold on, hold on. Let me just. No, nah, this is comfy. I'm good. I'm good. I, in my head, I thought it looked goofy, but I'm good. <laughs> yeah, no, Sorry we... for the tangent. No, you're good, dude. I have a quick question for you. Okay. I see you posting. He has a question before you, actually. Okay. Okay. Well, what's the percentage at? All right. Uh, Well, well, so we got to replace a battery. So before we hop into that next question, let's, uh, let's take a quick break, refuel, and we'll get back. All right, guys, we're back. We are refueled, replenished. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jordan, really quick. I see you posting Red Bull. All the time on your social media. Are you? Is there like a sponsorship income in? I saw you got inv- invited to an event too, a Red Bull event, right? I've been to a couple Red Bull events. Yeah. Yeah. So what's that all about? Can you just unpack that real quick? First of all, I'm blessed. Okay. Okay. May I say I don't know. They just like I had a rep, two reps. One rep told another rep about me. I don't know. They reached out. Um, they have like a. They call them like SOLs. They just like send influencers or plan influencer trips. Red Bull's like the most genius, and I also don't know how much I can say about stuff. Mm. I never really signed an NDA, and they're pretty they're pretty dope. But I think this is like public info. Like we go out, they curate these really cool trips. No one has deliverables. No one has to post anything. Um, mm. Obviously, you're not gonna get invited back. I'm sure if you don't post stuff. But like, why would you not post on these? Yeah, super yeah, cool? yeah. yeah. I think when you're a content creator, the most difficult thing is to continuously curate a subject matter to create content around. Yeah, and especially sure. if you're a lifestyle creator or maybe even like a niche sports creator, for a company like Red Bull, who's willing to throw a bunch of money at a trip, and and sometimes, like I, I did Formula One with them, I did Vegas F1, <laughs> like they have taken so much more care of me than I feel like I even deserve. Um, and shout out my reps over there, they're awesome. Shout out the Red Bull reps. They have yeah, treated me so, sure. so well. Um, but yeah, they just like plan these trips and like I get to film content. It's really cool in this season of my life where like I sort of feel out of place when I'm on these trips because like I'm, I don't know, I don't feel like an influencer really. I don't feel like a content creator. Yeah. I make mm. content for fun because yeah. I don't think I could ever stop, which has been great. It takes the pressure off. But like the only time I make YouTube videos in the last six months or a year has been all my Red Bull videos from Symphonic, F1, we just did... Uh, Sand Scramble and Glamis, and I've had Jeez. some of the best times That one looked cool, life. dude. Yeah. yeah. They're like the most genius marketers in the world. Like, people don't drink Red Bull because they saw an ad for the most part. I think, mm-hmm. I think, I'll speak from my experience, people drink Red Bull because of like the true brand they've built mm-hmm. and the drink slaps. Yeah, and they're like, all their commercials are pretty funny, too. What, I know. Like, What's your favorite drink? Of Red Bull? Yeah. Hot take? Maybe, maybe the coldest take in the world. The original. I love the original huh. Red Bull. Uh, wh- the white, like co- white cans, coconut something has been on okay. fire lately, and supposedly they have a light blue can that my brother and his wife rave about. They have a dark blue can that's like blueberry or something, or maybe the light blue can. I thought the light blue can was like zero sugar. Like I don't yeah, think I so, that, so, but they rave about it. I haven't had it yet. Okay. To be honest. I what think I've only had one Red Bull in my life. I like the pineapple. <sighs> That's a super hot take. I don't even ever had that. The yellow can? Yeah. Dude, try Oh, it. yeah, I have. Never mind. They make, that's like what they use for all their cocktails. Yeah, I've definitely had that. Yeah. yeah it's I've good. It's good. It's good. Yeah. 
That yeah, that's like a good. good it's a yeah. good uh, like mixed drink, or if you want to make like mocktails, okay, that's the one to do. And then they have dragon fruit too, right? Isn't that the maroon the one? The whole podcast is just us. Yeah, you yeah. Know what? I'm pretty sure they have a watermelon. <laughs> one. Yeah, yeah, and I'm think yeah. You're like, no, I don't think so. <laughs> Wait, actually, I think I started a gas well, station. Yeah, dude, one they're, time. they're great, and now I got Red Bull on deck. Like they, they're just so generous you, as a company mm-hmm. to be working with them has been a blessing. So whenever I go on trips, I make sure I like over deliver. Yeah, I ask yeah. everyone, like, what do you guys want from me? Because this is so fun, and yeah. I love this, and mm-hmm. I like this provides. Again, it's that, like, relief of pressure to create content. Yeah. I just get to go and make, like, the purest form of content. I've gotten to bring some of my extremely talented creative friends with me. And, like, the only thing I need from you is to, like, take photos and shoot videos. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the thing they had the most fun doing on the trips was that. And I got to, like, watch them in their element. And, like, that became the most fun thing for me on the trip. Is, like, Dude. So it's been a blessing on blessing on blessing. So shout out Red Bull. I love you guys. I'm sorry I like Liquid Death so much. I, I just, like... <laughs> I like it all. I like water and caffeinated beverages. Yeah. Which is basically good... everything, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's that's either like... caffeine or it's like... Uh-huh. That's not basically everything. There's <laughs> alcohol. I don't really drink alcohol anymore. Oh, they got soda? They got soda. Caffeine? That's caffeinated, I guess. Oh, that's shit. But is it yeah. a... Ca- you know what I mean? Is that what they're really trying to do with soda? Okay, you got me with alcohol. I'll, I'll give you that one. You did give me with alcohol. Yeah. What about smoothies? What would that that's go a, under? That's its own section right yeah. there. Dude. Yeah, that's okay. All what right, guys. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Put, put, the, put the guns away. You just <laughs> yeah. You're like, what about the yeah. random ass Firing game? team at me right now. Yeah. Um, I have one more question, then it's free reign to talk about whatever you want. Wow. Anything? Yeah, anything. Dude. Anything, anything? <laughs> whatever. You go crazy. Whatever your okay, imagination what's the question? Takes you. No, so just about how you've been moved, you moved down towards the beach, right? I don't know if you want to disclose the actual location, so if you don't, we. Like my address? We could put it on the screen. <laughs> yeah, don't put it up. No, just. You uh, can visit him San whenever. Diego area. Yeah, San Diego area. Um, I was born in Carlsbad, Encinitas area mm-hmm. until I was like three. Yeah. So I've seen you've been running. You've been running at like late night, early morning. We're, ta- we're ta- tackling so many topics right now. I'm <laughs> panicking right now. I've been running in San Diego. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's been great. I moved there. January 1st about and it was something my main reason for moving back from Arizona was I sort of hit a point in my life where I'm like I don't really need to know where I want to live right now and I had that I felt that pressure mm-hmm. like sometimes I feel like I'm old you know what I mean I'm, I'm a young man I'm 25 Definitely. Hey, young and bucks. as much as I loved Arizona and I love my community out there I really wanted to live by the beach again and so I initially moved back here in like a temporary phase are we Gucci? yeah we're good okay in a temporary phase living with family which got elongated because my nephew came and it was like a really nice season it was really calm and like I didn't pay rent love my family there was just like a little yeah. we'll call it a, a staycation okay. mm. and over time my like wanting to move to Carlsbad my fr- like frustration about how much it costs to live solo in California was absolutely mind blowing yeah. yeah. and I don't know my attention span's short so like next thing you know I was looking at moving in- to Paris because my, my family's in Paris. Wow. I have family in France. I'm French. Oh, you meant Paris. I Paris. thought you meant no, Paris, California. California. <laughs> no. Oh, There's met, a lot of Paris yeah. in the United States. <laughs> uh-huh. um, yeah, like Paris, France. And this, is a, this is a pretty cool story that I've never told on a podcast that I guess we could dive into. It's free reign. I free reign. He said yeah, I can free, say whatever I want. Say whatever you want, it's man. Uh, I did not know you had f- family in Paris. Yeah, and so right as the new year approached and I knew I was like I wasn't going to overstay my welcome anywhere because I went from my brother's house my mom's house my mom let me stay through the holidays God bless her heart and I was looking to Paris and then a crazy thing happened of course God intervened yeah. and a very good some of my closest friends in the world uh, the wife of them I don't know how to explain that uh, a, f- a woman wonderful lady <laughs> she uh, sent me a listing and a Facebook listing, kind of as a joke, and was like, hey, you should check this out. Like, this is funny. And it was two dudes looking for a roommate in a beautiful place. My place now, obviously. Spoiler alert. Ooh, um, and it was funny because one of them was a fireman, and I, my brother's a fireman. Yeah. Um, all his in-laws, like a crazy amount of them come from the fire world. Um, and so I had been around it a lot. He was like a surfer, skater, um, and then the other roommate was a cinematographer, photographer, creative. They, they like literally in the listing talked about church and like outdoor, all these things. Right in my price range, like way too good to be true. But that was kind of what was funny about the listing. And so she sends me that. I'm like, yeah, of course, I'll reach out. Like, and that was San Diego again. Like that mm-hmm. wasn't, I kind of like off my mind. 
But again, the girl who sent me the listing, bless her heart, had just been looking for places for me the whole time, of course, because my friend. Wow, oh, awesome. man. Yeah. And dude, I like a week later signed a lease with two dudes I've never met before, which is super unlike me. Like, mm-hmm. the reason I didn't move to Carlsbad is because I'm so picky about who I lived with. The only person I'd even considered it had to move to L.A. or wanted to move to L.A. There was a little season there where I was considering moving to L.A., and then I panicked, and I was like, what am I doing? I don't want to go to L.A. Mm. Yeah. Not right now. I could handle it, but why would I put myself in that situation? Yeah. So fast forward, yeah, we moved in, and, like, this season has been almost like a testimony in itself. And, like, the relationships that have been building, the community that's been built, the season of my life that God is unfolding and having me walk through is like, it just, it, it lives that testimony out mm. even harder. Because when it was happening, I'm like, this is such a God thing. Like, I know there's something this about is this such season. A, this yeah. is something you God, do. Yeah, God's <laughs> like talking to me and I'm in a season of my life where I listen now. And like, mm-hmm. this is something I'm like, yeah, he, he, he obviously wants me here. And now looking back, it's like tenfold what I imagine and yeah. the things that have had, it's, it's incredible. It's interesting how, how quickly, uh, <laughs> you you can have your all your plans throughout your whole life, right? Mm-hmm. And if God doesn't want you there, if you're not called to be there, gone, <laughs> done. Facts. I think if you're listening, done. I think if you're listening, I think mm-hmm. our free will enables us to just veer away from God's plan a lot. Yeah. That's very true. Yeah. yeah, that's very true. I think sometimes He has like a funny way of like bringing you back. Because like I remember sometimes I'll ask God like, you know, what? I want I want this this. You know, I don't know how I'm. How I'm gonna get there, but I hope you like lead me down the path. Yeah. Then I'll forget it a few months later, and then something crazy will it's happen, like reminder, and yeah. I'm like, huh, you know what? Yeah. I did ask for this, didn't I? Yeah. But I imagine, and this conversation was sort of the product of that classic, like in I think Revelations, God talks about the beginning and end all being written. Like He knows. I, I don't again. I'll. I'll keep repeating. We got a it. we I'm, got a Bible dictionary yeah, over there. I'm Phil, not, the, do they talk about the Revelation? No, I know they do. I just don't know the, the the verse, and I'm a little ignorant to scripture. I'm reading my Bible. I'm so, all right, we all ignorant. do you know the verse? It talks about God knowing the beginning and the end. Yeah, I think it's Revelation. Someone Revelation. I'm guessing. Phil is here. It's sort of less guys. important, but Phil can still look it up for us, so we know. So we're getting a little theologically enlightened. Okay. Um, but so that pegs the debate of like. God is with us. The Holy Spirit is with us as we operate with free will. And mm-hmm. so it's like, is God shepherding us through our life or is does he know the decisions we're going to make or both in a weird way? Mm-hmm. Because God is outside of time. So is God shepherding us and he knows the decisions we're going to make, but he's still shepherding us. That would, to me, it'd seem weird if like I was herding my sheep and I knew these ones were going to veer away and I'm bringing them back and trying like that just seems weird to me Mm -hmm. I'm more on the side and I'm also theologically ignorant that God is our shepherd and he's hurting us that's how my life feels so that's the the point I stand for and to me to my knowledge I don't think you can prove it with the gospel because it's just the way you interpret interpret it it. it's your interpretation so I think that goes back to that I always feel like I'm a sheep God is my herder. I yeah. don't know if that's what you call it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My and herder. My free will can veer me as far away from the Lord as possible, but the more I listen to the Lord, the easier it is for him to keep me in the path that he has for me on this world. Yeah. Mm. And so just like that, sometimes, yeah, your free will can take you away. Yeah. And it's not to say that the Lord won't bring you back later. Like yeah. he'll give you a lot of opportunities to listen to him. But mm-hmm. in my life, the more that I've been attentive to the Lord, I feel like I just get kept in this really narrow line walking in the path God has for me, and that's pr- proved to be a lot more fruitful for me in my life. Well, that's good. I think that a lot of people would actually agree with you. Yeah. I think a lot sure. of crazy stuff happens when you veer off the path. That's, I mean, that's that's why, yeah, that's why a lot of people who are really soaked in their in their faith end up having, I mean, have you had any, um, I mean, you just gave us an example, but any, like, have you felt a spiritual connection increase at all? Oh, absolutely. An increase. Yeah. Um, I definitely don't think I'm in the season of my faith where, like, this is sort of intimate. Like, I don't know. I ask these questions all the time to people because okay. I'm so curious. And yeah. I feel like people Well, they might be too. The people enough. watching yeah. might yeah. be too. No, of course. So. And I always ask people, I like to know people's testimonials. And yeah. Like, what are crazy things? You, like, what are, how, like, what's the, to what capacity have you communicated with the Lord directly? And I feel like, yeah. to my knowledge, it seems like the Lord's way of communicating through the Holy Spirit is like, 
and this is tough. I'm really being really careful to generalize here because I've heard some crazy testimonials. Yeah. Um, but to me, the general scheme is like the Lord's not always just speaking English to you. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah, definitely. I think those who are super in line with prayer and and have like a really strong prayer life maybe have built a way to like directly communicate with the Lord through the Holy Spirit. Blah blah. Yeah. In my life, it's been honestly a lot predicated on the past. Like my faith is very reliant on like the things God's already done in my life. Okay. And I see a lot of people veer away from the Lord in tough seasons. And for me, I mean, the disciples are a perfect example. Like one of the frustrations I have with the disciples, like how have you guys watched God do all these miracles time and time and time and time and time and time again? The most crazy things in the world. You've helped. I mean, the disciples even, provi- they, they did miracles, they performed miracles through the Lord mm-hmm. in whatever part of, of when the Lord leaves and, and they're going off to, to spread the gospel further before the crucifixion. And when the crucifixion happens, they're still doubting. Like, to me, that's crazy. Yeah, that is, like, pretty... And, but we watch it with humans time and time again. A lot of my more, like, theologically advanced uh, friends and people in my life have kind of explained to me that, like, we're so quick to forget. And yeah. we're, so, we're so quick to doubt. And so, for me, my reminder that always brings me back to faith isn't what's going on in my life today. I kind of want to, I want to live independent of circumstance and remain in relation with, with the Lord now, mm-hmm. but I have testimony my whole life. Like the Lord's blessed me when I wasn't even attentive to him, when yeah. I wasn't listening to him, when I wasn't leaning into him, I was blessed tenfold yes. and I was put through seasons and some people go, well, that's just like circumstance was like, well, I was also put through seasons that were horrible that taught me amazing things yeah. that brought me loads of wisdom, which was also the Lord not giving me great circumstance, but teaching me things in a season when I wasn't even open to him. So that's like my first testimony is like, my life's already been a testimony. Mm -hmm. Um, Time and time again, I've had these little moments. I had this real, this is a moment, I'll share this. Okay. This is like one of my first fun, I'll call it a funny testimony because it is, it was laughable. Like I, (laughs) this was during a season when I had finally started leaning into the Lord and I was asking these kind of naive questions of like, Mm -hmm. I would ask stupid questions to my friend. I'm not scared to learn things if I appear stupid. Like, okay. I'll appear stupid if I, it's in exchange for, for knowledge. Or yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, for sure. And I would ask friends of like, oh, does the, like, has, can God do this? Or like, has God done this for you? Or have you ever experienced this? I was on a rally with a good friend of mine, also like a coworker at the time, someone I was, I was doing like creative work for. And we were on a car rally and we're in a Lamborghini. I don't have a lot of faith in people driving me. It's never been my thing. Yeah. I've, I've been in a car accident with someone driving me and I just, I don't think people pay attention. I think some people drive with pride and I don't like it, whatever. Maybe it's a lack of trust. The lack of control? Yeah, lack Mm -hmm. of control maybe. And so we're in a Lamborghini. We're like an hour and a half into this rally. So this hasn't even come come to mind yet. And I'm new to my faith and I'm in this car. And I also want to preface, this is going, a lot of these testimonies can just come off as coincidences. Coincidence or not, maybe it is coincidence. I'm open to that idea. Um, we're in the Lamborghini, he's driving, he's distracted. I'm not at the season of my life where like, I'm just open to praying in front of people much. Yeah. And I think to myself, I'm like, we have a lot of driving ahead of us. It's not that I don't trust the person driving, but like, I don't know how much pride there is or like how far we're going to push limits, whatever. So I'm like, I'm going to pray. So I close my eyes. We're in the middle of nowhere. We're in the middle of, but F word. Arizona. Then watch my language. Remember last time I said I'm going to get better? Oh, that's that. true. I, I do. I do. I remember that. Um, we're in the middle of Arizona. We've been driving for an hour and a half. That, those are important. Now I think about it. I'm going to close my eyes and I pray. I do like a 45 second, maybe minute long prayer. We're in the middle of Arizona. There's nothing around. Okay? I open my eyes, finishing my prayer. And the, my, my head's like maybe a little angled. Maybe I'm like, don't want to, him to see me pray. So I'm like closing my eyes a little this way. I open my eyes. We're probably doing 120 miles an hour. Oh, my God. <laughs> Legally on closed roads. We were on the Autobahn in Arizona. They have theirs. Yeah. And I open my eyes, and there's just a giant side of the road. Uh, what do you call it? Like a billboard. Like a billboard. Yeah. Huge billboard. And it's just Jesus' face on it. There's no <laughs> words. It wasn't promoting anything. It didn't have, like, JW.com on it. It's just, like, Jesus. a Jesus banner. Of That's his face. Crazy. It was the first thing I saw. And I just went, I just laughed. Yeah. It's the only thing. It was, I've never had an experience like that in my life. I thought it was so funny. I just made a conscious decision to lean into the Lord in the last coming months. Like, it was just funny. It's that little things like that yeah. where the Lord's just like, mm, this will be funny. Like, watch yeah, this. Like, exactly. I'm here. 
And and that's a super weak testimony. Like my my current season has been like one of the more stronger testimonies in my life to see okay. the way God's actually working in my life. That was just like, I think the Lord just reminding me. He's yeah, he's like, yo, he's I'm, I'm right here. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't think the Lord's going to show up in, in ghost form and present his face to you, right? Like, we don't mm-hmm. even know what the face of God is. We know what the face of Jesus is. But that's the way I think that a lot of the times the Lord, the Holy Spirit will communicate things to you. Yeah, I agree. And maybe it was coincidence. Mm-hmm. Craziest coincidence in the world. Mm-hmm. Um and I've had loads of testimony since, like just things in my life. The more, I will say this, the more you lean in the Lord, the more he leans into you, point blank period. Yeah. 100%. And I think if you're in a season of doubt or you've always doubted the Christian faith or maybe even religion as a whole, God as a whole, um, I just challenge you to lean in for a bit. You can, like nothing's stopping you. Yeah. Try. 100%. There's so many things you can lean into. Like this is a concept that's come up a lot and I don't want to ramble on too much, but like, there's a lot of things you can put to the test. If you don't, if you doubt something and the, there's no repercussions to trying it, go try it. Like I think following scripture to a T, like if you, if you doubt the Christian faith, follow the commandments to the T, to a T for a year. There's no repercussions. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to turn into some psychopath. You're just going <laughs> to, it's like the, you're in the clip at the Ovan where it's like, they're talking about some guy taking a ton of vitamins. He goes, it's so like, what happened to him? You just get like better. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what's going to happen. It's like, what's yeah. going to happen if you follow the commandments? You yeah. just turn into a great dude. Like, yeah, yeah. do it. <laughs> yeah. I've never Abstain seen from sex for a year with before marriage. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Like put yourself, we live in a culture that breathes putting yourself first. Oh yeah, it's not for what sure. the gospel says. It's not to say there's no self care. It's not contrary to self care. Self care. It's just, we, we live, we're service-based humans. Mm-hmm. You'll be so much happier putting other people first. You 100%. might get stepped on sometimes, mm-hmm. but your life will be net positive. And I could go on and on. I go through the commandments to a yep. T, covening people's property, wives, whatever, being envious, jealous, all these things. Like, yeah. your life will get better. Try it. Uh, yeah, for sure. And if it gets worse, I'm sorry. I don't know. I think, <laughs> I think you read the manual wrong. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know. I've been in that season where it's like, okay, I doubt something. What if I try it? Are there repercussions? There's not. Then I'll try it. I'll yeah. see. I'll see what it's like. Yeah. I'm not telling you to go try mushrooms because, like, that's not my concept here. I'm talking about yeah. like productive. Like you really want to see yeah, God? Yeah. Go, try these. Well. Yeah. But productive in, in the in the case that we're sort of speaking. Of, yeah. Like, that's been something that's been beneficial. Yeah, I've always like kind of represented God as um, a best friend that's always there for you if you want Him to be there for you. He's He's always at the door knocking. Yeah. And. If you choose to be close to them, you open the door. Hey, yeah. how you doing? Yeah. And uh, he always asks if you if you want to talk, if you want to. And if you say no, okay, all right. Well, I'll be I'll be here uh, whenever you want, whenever you want to talk, whenever you want to see me. I'll be right here. Like I'm not gonna move. And I think, um, but then I think you know I I hear all these things about like I, I took a theology class and I honestly forgot most of it because it was like over a year ago. That happens. But there was a concept. Um, about, you know, why do bad things happen to good people and why do good Mm -hmm. things happen to bad people? And I remember kind of not arguing, but debating with someone. It's almost like when the devil has you where he wants you, which is not with God. If you're, if you're away from God, the devil doesn't see you as a threat. He'll say, Hey, don't, don't mess with this person. Make their life perfect. Like don't, don't give them hardships. Don't make them whatever. They're right where they want them to be or right where we want them to be. But when you have a close relationship with God, it's almost like you're you're more under attack by storms. You're you're Correct. tested more, right? Yeah. It's like, and I think God does that for a reason. After a storm, what happens after a storm? There's a rainbow, mm-hmm. right? There, there's all there's always a calm after the storm. There's always beauty. I thought you were going to say there's always a rainbow after a storm. I was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. Physically, <laughs> I'm, listening, yeah. I'm listening. I'm just saying, once once bad stuff goes away, there's a light. There's a light that happens and. Mm-hmm. I think that we're all taught things very, it's a very intricate process. We don't understand why it happens until we do. You know, like there's, there's definitely some times where it can be a month after you're like, you know what, I don't know why this bad thing happened to me. Why did this, okay, for, why did this person leave my life? Or why did I have discourse with this person? Why did we spread apart? They were with, they were with me for a decade. Why are we not close anymore? Well, there there is that one Bible verse that I screwed up on a on a podcast. It was like you don't know what is it, Phil? Yeah, dude. When Phil's when like, was stop it? asking me about Bible verses. Yeah, you he's like, I'm trying I'm to rest over there. Oh. Oh. Uh, was that 
tough. That's <laughs> not. That's not it's, trying. It's, it's, yeah, it's, mo- it's mostly like you don't know. You don't know now, but soon you will. Mm-hmm. God knows everything. We don't know. We're ignorant to that. So I think that it all comes back to faith, and that's why I say we don't have physical proof. We're not. We're not. We're not back then. You know, we're 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 reading the word, and it's you, you have to have faith in it. We don't know. I I believe for sure. I mm-hmm. have faith in it. But there's no physical proof. Jesus is not standing in front of me. I'm not witnessing these miracles. I've came to a season where I'm learning a lot more of the like foundational proof of, and maybe it's it's more like theoretical proof. But like, I mean, there is proof. Like we have the Word of God, and I'm not going to dive into Noah's that. Ark. I'm not ready to speak on that. <laughs> but I am ready. To, I'm at least open to the idea that like the more you learn, the more you will actually realize there is a lot of proof of the gospel mm-hmm. and proof mm-hmm. of Jesus Christ, whether you believe he's the Messiah or not, which we're Christians. So yeah. one thing I, I want to ask is, do you think the devil is always responsible for bad circumstance? Or do you think also the Lord can put you in bad circumstances? I think circumstances? the Lord, yeah. the Lord as well. You? For sure, I, I think, think the Lord. Yeah, too. I think it's a sticky situation because the devil runs the, the world. This is, this is the devil's playground. Je- Jesus has left. He hasn't come back yet. Right, be so careful I think with that, that sentence. Okay, well, yeah, so yeah. The, devil, the devil's around. He's he's the devil, he hasn't he's taken devil, over yeah. yet. Y- y- well, <laughs> De- devil. Yeah, that's. I'm just checking our statements here. But yeah, yeah. 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 I'm not saying that he's like. Yeah. Our rule, like no. But <laughs> <laughs> our rule. Yeah. They're like, what is this Atlantic I mean, Records? Yeah. What am I watching? Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of bad things that are allowed to go on because. There, there's not. I'm not. I don't want to. I, I have to watch. Yeah, you have to watch your words when you say this, like you said. But I think that both. I think both. I think God teaches you lessons too. It's like that. That one quote. It's like uh, when you ask for wisdom, does God just grant you wisdom, or does He give you situations to become wise? Do you want to be a good problem solver? Is God just going to make you a problem solver, or is He going to give you problems for you to solve for you to become a better problem solver? It's like mm-hmm. Alex Hormozzi talks about patience. Like, how do you? How do you obtain patience? Yeah. You wait a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're put in a lot yeah. of situations where yeah. you don't get what you want quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The and, Lord yeah, I has think to put us in circumstances to mold and grow us. Yes. You well, can't just be blessed you're, with wisdom. You're not granted exactly. it. Yeah. You have to be tested through it. Yeah. yeah. I think the difference between like God putting you through bad stuff and like the devil, the devil's like evil. That I think that's where like, you know, murderers or Rapist, and I think that's where the devil comes yeah. into play. But like when it comes to, you know, say, like something bad that you would consider happening in your life, but like nobody is like really killed or hurt in that way, then I think that's when God is coming in for character development. Do like, I don't think I put that in the right sentence. I think you put it. Uh, a lot yeah, better. I don't think we can like label it. I think yeah. it's. I love the question though. Like that question comes up so much. Yeah. Like if God is real, then why do bad things happen? I think it's a good question to ponder mm-hmm. and have conversations around. I to me, it's it's it was something I felt as a kid, and now I've yeah. like I feel like I have the I I have the answer in my heart. It all comes mm-hmm. back to free will. Yeah. You know, if 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 we didn't have free will, we we would not we would not be able to think and do things that we are able to do. Obviously, God doesn't want us to do all these bad things, right? But we. We have free will. We can do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He does not want us to do. That doesn't mean he doesn't want us to do it. That doesn't mean he's granting bad activities. It, he he wants us to go through a path. But if he's like, no, you're gonna live your life like this. You're gonna do this. You're gonna do this. That is not living a free a free life. Yeah. Like we're, yeah, I agree. But you, you know, it's I don't know. It's a this then is like, a whole nother pod, dude. We can talk about this for three hours. Yeah, and even then, in that situation, like, say if God was like didn't give us free will then our love for him wouldn't even be real anyways like that's that is a very good point yeah yeah it's the whole point of free will right it was for us to come back to the lord so he didn't force us to love him yeah Mm -hmm. which is crazy i mean these conversations i'm careful like i'm i'm trying to get up on my theology enough in scripture Mm -hmm. to be able to have these conversations i love the conceptual conversations where like yeah the like i said the conversation about does god is everything written or is God with you in real time because of free will? Like I like having those conversations because I don't need yeah. to pull from scripture yeah. the whole time. I, yeah, I agree, and yeah. I like having them because you know I don't think I'm anywhere near you guys at least uh, when it comes to theology. But you know, I'm I still I'm not too. <laughs> I'm at least, no, no, no. at least Phil, I'm nowhere near to that level. But I'm still always Maybe like next pot, good to. Not I always feeling, like learning as bad. He, we should actually. I'd love bust to have. Out, I'd love to talk about some theology. Yeah, that would be fun. 
Yep. And actually you told the devil to start testing Job. Correct. So we're, okay. uh, the devil insinuated to that Job only right. is righteous because the because Lord has blessed, yeah, he's blessed, he's blessed him. him. Mm. So right. will he Job crops, still return to you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right, yeah. Mm. Yeah. So it's funny. God will put these things that are holy. Yeah. He even said, hey, well, what about Job? Yeah. 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 Like you may be oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh. And that, he chose him for something bad. Yeah. And, and he yeah. asked him, he's like, let me take this way. He's like, no, don't take this way yet. Yeah, start with this. Uh, yeah, I remember that. It's yeah. Pay yeah. attention. I remember. One class. <laughs> One class. <laughs> <laughs> One church there. session. Uh-huh. Nah, he man. watched like the Veggie Tales episode of the story. Of <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's, he's like, not oh my actually gosh. remembering his theology class. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, dude, I, I, I would 100%. Like it, it, next time we got you, we got to have you back, obviously. Next time, dude. Bring your book. Like, we can make half of the whole episode just talking about theology stuff. Write some stuff down in your Bible. Be like, hey, let's talk about this. I will. You know, that would be really cool. That would be a cool episode, honestly. I love it. I got to I gotta study up, dude. Yeah. I'm in, like, the, the New Testament. I've only read a couple yeah, books. Yeah, I've only mm-hmm. read the New Testament. So I started in Old Testament. My whole take was this. This is going to turn into a Bible episode. This is great. <laughs> um, and that's going to lead me to my next point. But I started reading the Bible because I was like, all right, you know what? Like, if I'm going to dive into my faith, I need to read the Bible. I'm not going to be a part of a, a, a belief system that predicated on a, a, the word of the... I'm not, not going to do that. Yeah. You get my point here. It's pretty easy. Yeah. Um, and so I started reading the Bible naively, just from start to finish. And I'm... I'm the <laughs> I'm Old reading, Testament? I'm, oh, I'm talking from the start, dude. I'm talking... Okay. From page one? From page one, dude. I'm reading, like, through... The, there's, like, a list. I, and again, I'm a bit naive on Old Testament, too. Like, the list of names of, like, the... The geology, geology. I no. don't even know. What's dude. it called? The uh, genealogy. genealogy, geology. That's stones. Um, <laughs> the genealogy, and there's like Rocks. there's like ten pages of names of who's whose son and who's. Damn. And so I, I I'm getting through it, and I get to a point where I'm like, what am I doing? My friends are like, oh no, like you don't have to read the Bible like that. There's a million different ways you can read the Bible. I'm like, oh really? They're like, yeah. Like I'd recommend starting with New Testament. And people have their different ways. And I start going to New Testament because like, yeah. I'm aware of the crucifixion. I grew up Christian. Like, I know yeah. what happens and what I'm reading. And so I start reading it. I'm like, oh, this is a lot more entertaining. And now keep in mind, like, I, I'm, in, I'm in Bible studies and I go to church. So like, I've, I've been opened up to a lot more of the word of God outside of just where I'm at reading. Yeah. But even just reading through the gospel is like, oh, and then I got to a point where I'm like, oh, I haven't been breaking it down. I'm just reading it. Like reading yeah. scripture is kind of pointless. Yeah, I'm like I'm think I was I wanted to to finish the Bible to say I've read it, but I kind of check myself. I'm like, yeah. why? Who it's am I trying like to prove that I've read? It's almost like hearing something and listening to something, right? It's like you can hear something, but if you listen to it, then you actually understand it. Yeah, you're like you're saying I, like you're reading it, but you're not like I was reading it, but I wasn't understanding it. I was reading it like a story without diving into it. Okay. But the Bible is very, uh, it can be very poetic. Like, I think, I don't know if it's Revelations or, or certain books are read poetically. Uh, it's up for interpretation. So, like, it was, I was doing no one a service by doing that. So yeah. then I stopped. and like, all right, I'm not in a rush. I'm going to start reading, like, one book at a time or one chapter at a time and breaking it down. And I read, like, I listen to, like, breakdowns on it. And that's been super productive and, and helpful um, in, my, in my journey. I'm trying to think of, I had a really good point that I wanted to segue this into that was predicated on religion and Bibles and reading and the Gospels, but I kind of forget. I'll come back to it. I'll remember. Okay. I mean, what, what else do you want to talk about, Xander? We're at an hour and two minutes. I mean... Do you have any, any questions? Any crazy for questions, the, dude? Any, Throw me some any, crazy ones, dude. Some crazy Start stuff. Start some crazy conversation. Uh, let's see. Do you have any hot topics for us this week? No, not one. We have, like, what, seven more minutes? Yeah. Uh, what was the one last gay son week? or thought daughter? <laughs> Wait, what you say? <laughs> gay son or thought daughter? <laughs> Controversial <laughs> take? No, <laughs> no, actually, don't actually answer. I that feel story. like <laughs> no. I have an answer for that. I just need, let me like process whether or not I can answer. <laughs> <laughs> That's a trap, dude. You're trying to get me. All right, hold up. Did Did you have a hot topic? I'm gonna uh, last answer week? it seriously because. I can't get canceled for just being me. It's just what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. I, no, I agree, but mm-hmm. I didn't want to push you. This into is that gonna direction. peg a whole other topic that we have no business talking about. Yes. <laughs> all, right, all right, that's right. Being a thought is a choice. That's all I'm yeah. gonna say. Okay. okay, I agree. That's how yeah. I'm gonna ask the question. That felt good. That felt right. 
You know what? Being I a can thought is a you're not born and being a thought is definitely a choice. Correct. But yeah. then that pegs the question of oh, get my point. Yeah. None okay. of us have a position to be speaking on that. Interesting. Yeah, definitely. So not. I know, but <laughs> interesting. Yeah. That's a crazy question. What is that even? What? You haven't heard that before? No. Bro, that every gets in, that, that gets you asking questions about the Bible too and and yeah, that's that that's a rabbit hole for sure. So, I got a hot. Yeah. Take. I got the most hot take for you guys ever. What? We have to look at the TOS. Maybe bad. that'll be a topic. For I shouldn't the next be following. saying this. No, I'm, let's hear it, man. I'm incriminating myself. We already but went with the gay son thought daughter. Question. My hot take is: I would rather have a daughter who does porn than OnlyFans. <sighs> wow. Whoa! Yeah, no, wait, yeah. Oh, wait, no, wait, 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 correct, 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 correct. <laughs> I butchered that. That's the same thing. I'd rather have a daughter that does porn than is a sugar baby. Ooh. Ooh. I really butchered that. Only fan sugar baby was a parallel in my head. They're not. Yeah, I know. I was like, so, bro, so, isn't that the so, same? so unpack that just a little bit yeah, for I me. I need to hear the explanation. I want neither. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I will raise my daughter as a great father if I have a daughter. I hope. Yeah, I have so a it won't even cut. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a daughter. Da- what do you call him? A, uh, a dad, a daddy's. Gr- wait, no. I'm a not daughter? a daddy's girl. That's not the word. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. I'm a. <laughs> I'm a, a daughter, girl, daughter. I'm a girl dad. Oh yeah, fuck. I want to be. I feel like I, I. I would. I would love my first child to be a little lady, dude. Little, little lady. lady. She's okay. like tell me princess stories. I can. I can. Besides tell. a little just rage monster that like Joanne Fabrics, who just yeah. like wants to throw things around. Joanne's so Fabrics. <laughs> I don't bring a little two year old to Joanne's Fabrics. That'd be crazy. Um, I. This. Yeah, I, I walked into this one, so I'll. I'll back this up. <laughs> <laughs> I think in my quick take, and maybe this has changed as I became more religious, but I used to always say that, like, my daughter was doing porn, at least she's, like, working. You know what I mean? Like, she doesn't, like, give up on her dignity entirely. So, like, she's getting a, she's getting a paycheck. You know what uh-huh. I mean? Like, she earned that money. Uh-huh. But if, like, you're just a sugar baby, you've just completely just dropped all your your self-respect to well, let another man entirely There may be a little bit more privacy in being a sugar out, baby. Maybe. Yeah. Um, I think that when True. these women hop mm-hmm. into um, XXX videos... That's good. It's um, good. It's good metadata. It's, it's normally... Yeah. It's, it's normally... <laughs> it's normally uh, public, you mm-hmm. know? It's on uh, some type of hub. I forget the name. Yeah, I don't remember. But, oh, uh, yeah. I've never heard millions of, of views, probably. I've never been on there, so... Yeah, yeah me never. neither. I've never... Um, but but millions of views, dude, and and uh, sometimes the comments can get a little bit heinous. I think that if I was, if I put yourself in my, wh- how about we answer it? I would rather have a sugar baby. Uh, my my daughter be a sugar a sugar baby, baby sugar baby um, than a porn star, only because there's a little bit more privacy. And uh, to my understanding, I don't think sugar babies even have, uh, um, uh, you know. Relations, we'll just say. Yeah, with, so a uh, lot of them don't have relations with with, with, with these shit. older guys, right? They just have to be around them or give them attention. All right. Well, let's assume they kind of do because most of them, there's got to be some sort of exchange. Okay. I think like yeah. now we've some got a modern them? modern day version of Sugar Baby that lives in LA, where it's like guys just want girls around mm-hmm. for status and the appearance. So like, yeah, girls. So are like, you thinking yeah, like, like I'm Sugar Baby? Girls are getting like, like they've got access to funds. Yeah. They're probably doing some things. You know Honestly, I, mean? I cannot like live with the fact that my there's like videos of my daughter <laughs> that's why out hot there. Take. That's, that's why just, I said the hot take. Listen, you know. you're picking the better of two evils. And the internet's yeah, that's forever. True, that's true. The internet's forever. Yeah, that's yeah. why I'm saying you're picking the better of two evils. It's like, even if she, ca- even like if she stops, it's like she can't come back. No one that. really agrees with me. Yeah. I don't think I met someone that agrees with me. <laughs> a sugar baby, she can but at I'll least buy me business, like a nice nice whip or something, you know? Like I don't know. There's something about... I'd rather you work for your money than just not, even if it's that. She comes back home from work. Dad, a great day at work today. (laughs) Better than her being like, Dad, I had a great day not working today. Had a great day shopping. That's crazy. Sorry, I had to mention it. I mean, people. You know, I I hope I I put that question in in some grown men. You know what? Yeah, you know, I like the question. If there's anyone watching this and you think that that's obviously very controversial, we want to know. Your thoughts below. All right, um, we're we're curious. Yeah, we're getting did you, we're did getting you, daddy, <laughs> dicey. Yeah, no. dicey. Those are the two. We're at an hour and eight minutes, dude. Did you have that last topic to kind of to kind of come up? I don't know. It was um, really good too. Whatever. It was, it was good. Yeah, I feel bad if they're missing out on it too. Ah, oh, well, I feel like we're missing out we're on it too. About Bibles. A lot about Bibles. Bibles are good. It could have had yeah. something to do with Bibles. Probably. It was definitely had to do with the Lord. I know that. Oh, I got it. I'll yes. end on this. We'll end on this. 
This is something I don't think I've ever told someone. So this is a, this is a good ender for this. And this and is I do want to get an ism from you. We'll get an ism. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it took a lot for me not to make a joke there, but I didn't. Um, <laughs> one of the things that I kind of experienced when I was falling into my faith was, and I sort of had a, had this feeling, I was like, and I am now like really on fire for the Lord, but I also understand I'm like sort and. I use the word ignorant lightly. Like I could be ignorant or naive to scripture. I have a lot of Bible to read, a lot of the word of God to read, a lot of work to do in prayer in relationship with the Lord. Um, But I'm on fire for the Lord. And as that feeling progressed, I wanted to talk about it all the time. Yeah. And I had this feeling in me of like, I didn't want to be the kid who's always vomiting Christianity to people around my friends and I would I'd feel like uncomfortable talking about it too much like I'm always in my head I'm like Jordan like you don't always need to bring up God you don't always need to do yeah. this around people who are very far in their faith and even sometimes them the worst because I'm like I don't want them thinking that I'm like this know-it-all like that I'm this new Christian that like thinks he's yeah. blah 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 it was it was the way I would be um the, the way it would come <laughs> off, right? Mm-hmm. And I kind of had a point where I'm like, that's such a bad way to live. Like, I'm on, like, that's the way I am. Why would I ever be ashamed about talking about the Lord? And if there's someone who looks at me in a way where it's like, oh, all this kid talks about is Christianity, then like, they've got a lot of work to do on themselves. And if they're Christians, then on their faith. And this is, leads me to like, the last part of this is like, I've had a lot of conversations with people that care about the opinions of the wrong people. Like I do think seeking the opinions of people is okay, but in Christianity especially, the biggest hypocrisy is the judgment of other Christians. And they judge people on the front of so many things like divorce, premarital sex, um, cussing, cursing, like yeah. all these things, right? You, like Christians, and I don't want to generalize, but some Christians, a mm-hmm. lot of Christians can be ruthless to other Christians. And I think they need to check themselves, a reminder for Christians to check themselves to realize that judgment in itself, only God should judge, only God can judge. Judgment in itself is just as much of a sin. Mm, Like your ability to think that you are better than other people by belittling them for the the sin they're committing makes you no better. It's the, the biggest hypocrisy I see in the Christian community. And it happens all the time. I'm probably guilty of it. Friends of mine are guilty of it. And there's people who are very guilty of it. Now, I try to keep myself in check. I try to keep my community in check as, as we all do each other. Mm-hmm. But I think there needs to be more accountability for that in the Christian faith where it's like, you can't keep looking down on people's stories. Like wow. people's circumstance probably has so many more layers than you know. And a lot of these people just judge before even asking anything about it. That's true. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, only God should judge. That's very true. I have no no argument against that. Yeah, I think was that already. your ism too? No, I don't no, know. No, man, what ism is. I, I, I thought I thought that was word of wisdom. I, mean, I could have. I think oh, that was a pretty good word ism. of wisdom. I thought that was yeah. very, a wisdom. very wise. A word of wisdom. Do I get a word of wisdom? Word of wisdom. <laughs> that was my that was my ism. All right. Yeah. Well, what was it? Just so they know about it. What what are you defining? Only God ism? can judge. Oh, like I need to label it now. I need to title well, normal, it. Normally, it's a sentence or two. But do you want to just make that the whole thing? Can your that ism? be my whole ism? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's. Do you want want a title for it? You, you, go ahead and title it. I, I'll bring it to the next podcast. I'll bring the word in scripture. It says only God okay. should judge. Right. Honestly, I hope there's a comment that says that doesn't say that in the book, and I'm like, oh crap. To <laughs> <laughs> <Like, laughs> so my knowledge, we are not to judge other Christians. I don't think yeah. that's you are to keep other Christians accountable. But that's different. All right. Yeah. So, hey, keep, stay on the lookout for, for part three with Jordan Bow coming up and the we'll next couple We'll give him a few months. months. Yeah, the yeah. next couple of months. Let me go live um, and grow a little bit, you know what I mean? Yeah, and maybe we'll be in season two by then. I think we are. We're, you're going to be you're gonna be with us in season two of the podcast, man. Come on, baby. Yes, oh, yeah. sir. And, and you, as far as I know, you're the only guest that has been back twice in one season. First special. one. So, no, nah, dude, we are, we are incredibly grateful. Thank, Thank you, you so mm-hmm. much, man, for for all the time you give us, for, for sure, sincerely. Yeah, um, of course. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, with that being said, guys, um, you know, I'm taking up uh, Phil's uh, spot today, so I think Xander should take mine and kind of, uh, you know, give us, right. the, give us the outro and, and kind of sign us off. But thank you, Jordan Bow. Yeah, Appreciate you, man. man. 
All right. Well, I goes, hope you guys enjoyed that video. Please subscribe, like, and stay tuned for the next one. See ya.